Good morning and welcome to our mission message and also welcome new friends to our mission blogs. This morning we continue this exciting series on the Holy Spirit, the Holy One. And I hope that you have purchased or got yourself the message translation as we're going to read, I'm going to do a lot of reading out of the message translation, the message Bible. Today we're talking about the four promises, the four divine promises of God through Jesus in John 14 about the Holy Spirit, the Holy One. Uh, let's take a read. Then John 14 from verses 1, I'm going to skip a few paras and then go on to the next, but read the whole chapter for yourself. Then uh, John 14 from verse 1. Don't let this throw you, Jesus said. I like the interpretation here of, of Eugene Peterson. Don't let this throw you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. There is plenty of room for you in my Father's house. If there is plenty of rooms in my father, Father's house. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your rooms ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. Wow. Let me stop there. The first promise in John 14 for us. Jesus promises us an eternal kingdom. An eternal house with the Father God. The eternal house with Father God. Life after death. Heaven. There is a place for us. There is a future home for you and me. And that home can start in this life. We can already have one foot in the heavenly home, yes. But the other foot of grace, love and faith starts in this life. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and you receive the Holy One, the Holy Spirit, already you can be part of the family of God and entering into this eternal home of glory. So here Jesus assures us that we have a future home with the Father. Then I'm turning the page. Jesus said, very important, John 14 verse 6, fundamental to the Christian faith. Jesus said, I am the road, also the truth, also the life. No one gets to the Father apart from me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on you do know him. From now on you do know him. You have seen him. You have seen him. Wow. Jesus here is claiming his deity again. He's claiming he's the Son of God. He's claiming the mission of salvation. And here we can learn from this passage. The second promise is that Jesus knows the way. Jesus knows the way to the heart of Father God, to this future glorious divine home of heaven. Jesus assures us he knows the way and we can trust Jesus because everything Jesus said and done in the gospel was miraculous, it was divine, and it proved his deity. And then later on, we know, of course, after the crucifixion, the resurrection power, the resurrection, the love of the resurrection, to prove us that this is the true gospel, that we can follow the good news, the forgiveness of sins, the message of grace. And then listen to the third promise. If you love me, Show it by doing that what I have told you. I will talk to the Father and he'll provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. This friend is the spirit of truth. But you know him already because he has been staying with you and will even be in you. Wow. Here we read that Jesus is not going to leave us alone. We will not be alone. We will not be orphaned. Jesus promised us the friend, the power of the Holy Spirit, the Numa, God's Spirit that he leaves with us. He's ultimately God here. And then he promises this friend, the Holy Spirit, 
and the Paracletos role to come alongside us. The Holy Spirit that will become our helper and our friend. Now I want you to imagine in this flight of grace. I want to call it the flight of pneumatic grace. We've said we are falling in love with Jesus all over again. And we are falling in love with the Holy One within us, the Holy Spirit. And within the pneuma flight of grace or then the pneumatic uh, a flight of grace because Jesus shows us through the word exactly to how to fly this grace flight, this flight of redemption, this flight of the pneuma, the flight with the Holy Spirit. And that is A, we're going to need a Bible, get yourself a Bible, join a church, exercise, fellowship and worship. But most important, we also need the manual, the manual to fly with the, uh, the Holy Spirit, this flight of pneumatic grace. And also, here's the thing, this friend that Jesus is prom promising us here becomes your co-pilot. This is the beauty. We're not alone during this flight of grace. We, should, we shouldn't fear anything. We have got a companion. We have an instructor pilot. Let me repeat. We have an instructor pilot in the form of the Holy One, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Teacher, the Spirit of Truth that reveals everything about God's, God's love, God's life, God's truth and grace to us. So we can experience this journey. Now you can imagine. If Jesus Christ says he's the son of God, he's the way, the truth and the life, he knows the way to this eternal glorious kingdom and eternal home with the Father, we can surely trust him by now and we can also trust the co-pilot because Jesus asked for the Father to send us the Holy Spirit or then the Holy Pilot, co-pilot or then the instructor pilot in your life. With this flight, you're not going to be alone. You will have a teacher, you will have an instructor co-pilot co with you along the way. So you can learn and grow in the Spirit and grow in grace, but also you can enjoy the journey. You can enjoy the flight. I, I remember some words that a friend told me long ago. A mentor and he told me Cor, I find it surprising that people always want to take the long difficult sacrificial road and and those words will stay for me with me forever instead of just putting our trust in Jesus the finished work that is done on the cross uh, the book of Hebrews says there in, in Hebrews 10 there is no sacrifice needed anymore no sacrifice needed anymore. We are forgiven. We are redeemed. And that is the first part of salvation. And now sanctification, we grow in the spirit. We grow as we learn in the school of love to love more. As we enjoy this flight of grace. Alongside us, we've got the Holy Spirit. The Paracletos, our instructor pilot or co-pilot. And within us, we've got this amazing supernatural inner force of God, God's Spirit. That's why we can enjoy this flight. And then lastly, very important, the fourth promise of the Holy Spirit is peace. Je Jesus says, yeah, I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. I am leaving you well and whole. And that's my parting gift to you. Peace. Peace. Wow. Jesus offers us peace in the Holy Spirit, the spirit of peace, the peace, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Shalom, the spirit of peace. And here's the thing, we can have an inner peace, a security and a peace that we know we've been redeemed and we're in a new uh, a relationship with the Trinity. That's awesome, that divine peace. We can have an outer peace. And also, very, very important, we can have this peace that makes us happy, that makes us to enjoy this life and enjoy this flight of grace. That is what this, what this is all about. And please, if you haven't got that peace, go on your knees after this and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then you will have
divine peace.